Well, first of all, let me say that for just a few minutes, I'm, I'm speechless uh, to have been extended this tremendous award. But let me say that I'm very grateful to God for putting me in this position to receive such a prestigious award. Also allow me to thank God for the athletes in action for bestowing this great honor on me, which puts me in some very distinguished company of honorees who have received this great award. This Coach Wooden Award, Keys to Life, certainly embodies and models the characteristics of this great man and coach. And I want you to know that I am deeply honored and humble to be thought of in the same vein and to receive this award. Now we all know of Coach Wooden's words of wisdom and we realize that wisdom comes from God and that wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. And I for one and I'm sure others have also benefited from this knowledge. If you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Getting together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Kindness is a language which the blind can see and the deaf can hear. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So truly this was a great caring and compassionate man and I am very thankful and honored for this moment. Now, I met Coach Wooden in 1964, LA Classic as a sophomore at Michigan. And again in 1965 as a junior in the NCAA championship game. And I must say to you that none of these meetings went well, much to my chagrin. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph, I am now on the same team with Coach Wooden. So I am grateful to receive this Keys to Life award, which exemplifies Coach Wooden, and I am grateful for that eternally. Now you know it's not fair to give a preacher 10 minutes. <laughs> they should be shame of themselves. But I think I read somewhere where obedience is better than sacrifice, so I'm going to do what I've been told to do. But I want to take just a few minutes to share with you one of the keys in my life that has enabled me and empowered me to fulfill this mandate to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I tried to run when I got this call, but the Lord said it's hard to kick against a prick. You can run, but you can't hide. So I'm, I'm grateful that I can say that, that I fought the good fight. I'm striving to finish the course and I'm praying to keep the faith. But folks, let me be honest with you. Let me be candid with you. About a year and a half ago, my faith was challenged. I wanted to give up because my wife died suddenly one Sunday morning as we were preparing to go to church. And as she lay there, I felt helpless. There was nothing I could do. She had had a stroke, and in a couple, two days, she's gone. I felt like throwing in the towel. I wanted to give up. And that seemed so uncommon because I had ministered to others and comforted others and eulogized others and sympathize with others. 
Now I can empathize with them because I know now how they felt. You don't know until you've walked a mile in another man's shoes. And I was really troubled. This was a spiritual warfare that was going on. You gonna give up? You gonna stop preaching? Had I given up, I probably wouldn't have received this award. But then I'm reminded and encouraged by the scripture of what the Lord said to Peter. He said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He wants to discourage you. He wants you to stop preaching and stop telling young people that they must stay attached to the vine if they're going to be successful. And the vine being Jesus Christ. He said, and I pray that your face fail not, but I want you to know you're going through something. I planted the flower. I can pluck the flower whenever I get ready. But I need for you to know that my grace is sufficient. It'll take you through this. And I want you to know this morning that if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would not be standing here. Because God's grace is sufficient. And let me remind you of Ephesians 2 and 9, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. And it is the gift, not a gift, but it is the gift it is the greatest gift that God has given us. This grace, someone said, is God's riches at Christ's expense. He said, you can't give up. He said, because there was a cost for this grace. He said, you owed a debt that you couldn't pay and he paid a debt that he didn't owe. Talking about Jesus Christ. So you have to keep fighting. You have to understand that you're not the only ones that have gone through trauma in your life. For he said, in this life, you shall have troubles, trials, and tribulations. But he said, to be of good cheer, for I have conquered the world. And so I want you to know that I'm honored to have been given this award. And it came at a very blessed time. Because even as preachers, we need encouragement. We need motivation. And certainly this award is motivating me to keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> to not give up and keep the faith. And as I close, I want to leave you with the words of this song. I've had some, some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and lonely nights. But when I, when I look around <clears throat> and when I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days, but I, I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low, I can hardly see the road, but then I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But oh, he knows, he knows what's best for me. Although my eyes can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, I won't complain. But oh, God, God has been good to me. He's been so very good to me, more than this old world could ever be. He's been so good, he's been so good, and he drives all, all of my tears away. He'll turn your midnights into day, so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. You made a way out of no way, thank you, Lord. You're Jehovah Jireh, thank you, Lord. 
I, I won't complain. God bless you.